Sunday. On the monthly game dev challenge, when we're looking into input systems, I feel it's been a really useful uh, monthly game dev challenge, actually. Um, but we're getting to the bit where I actually need to do something with it instead of just the learning. Uh, last stream, what we did was we looked at how we can update the priority of actors without having to remove uh, them and re-add them to the scene. Because if you remember, actors uh, with input components enabled uh, will, uh, upon being created, if their input is set to auto-enable, or if an actor gets co uh, enabled called on them, uh, that will put them on top of the stack and act as uh, the kind of highest priority um, kind of type of thing that can uh, receive input on, upon this stack. And they will go in the order in which they were created in the world. So we wanted to see, is there a way that we could have one that was created earlier become the highest priority one? And yes, you just call enable on it, which was quite nice. Um, I think it was... Uh, I, I'm, enable input by here. This is how we found out how to do it. Uh, and then we had a look at how the UI overrides work, and we did a bit of tracing through to understand. Um, you can there's there's a a setting called input is either game or UI or game and UI, and we wanted to try and understand like where does that logic, where does the inputs that have been fed into your system, where do they funnel off? Because uh, if you say just UI, your player controller will not get any of the input commands anymore. And so we wanted to understand exactly where up that chain does it get. And we did a bit of research into it. And we found out a lot of it. Um, Slate basically has access to a lot of this stuff. But it'll get... I think Slate always has access to it, possibly. But it, it may not get processed. But uh, whether or not it gets passed forward to the player controller and therefore the the input stack that the player controller keeps is down to this game viewport client. So I think there's a it trickles down through this input stack that we set up last time uh, that we went through last time we were here. So you can see that it goes via the Slate application. It trickles down into a scene viewport on key down, and then it goes into a U game viewport client. And there's a flag in there effectively that says like, should it be passed down uh, to the player controller or not? Um, ignore input is set to true. Uh, and so when you set the game mode using one of those nodes, uh, I don't know if we have our level blueprint set up to do that. I think we might have done that if I remember correctly. So let's whack this up here. Uh, yeah, set input mode. Yeah, these three different ones. So when you actually call that... Oh. Hello, Hold C. Thank you very much for the resubscription, dear Holtz. Nice to have you catch a stream, good sir. Now, it's not the silly early morning stream time. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, when you set these, it's within the code for this class, uh, for this function, it will set that ignore input uh, member, which will then stop the input being ciphered or kind of filtered through into the player controller and its respective input stack. So that's what we kind of learned uh, last time. The hot, is it like too loud? Like, is it popping off? Peaky, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, window, that's probably my sound settings. Windows likes to do it after a reset where it will reset the microphone settings. So let's find out. Is it? There we go. It's on 100. Thank you for resetting it. This is where you're meant to be, good sir. Hopefully now I will... Hmm, did that actually do it? Hopefully that's a little less peaky. It's really frustrating that it does that, to be honest. But that's the way it is, so... We'll get over it. Thank you for the feedback, though, dear sir. How have you been going? How have you been enjoying your dialogue uh, system that you've been building in Unity, Hot C? Oh, hello, Partly. What a, what a, what a pleasure to see you. Oh, the kite demo. Is that the, the, actual, the unreal thing with the kid and the kite that they used as their technical demo before? You want to see how they set up the world? Good. I'm glad to hear it's going well. Uh, let's set some goals for what I want to do today then. So we want to design a system where we can add actors with parameters to create an input consuming actor that will be destroyed once the correct set of inputs have been input by the player. And we did some discussions in here about the different scenarios that you want. So let's try and think of structure for, the, for this. The idea is that I'd like to reuse something like this in for like mini games or a game jam, anything along those lines. And so like trying to think of a little reusable structure. Okay, so let's think of uh, how to make this a uh, reusable uh, library almost, I guess, uh, for handling input. Uh, keyboard input, 
mini games, let's say. I don't think we need the hyphen, do we? All right, this is what we're looking to to kind of break down before we get into any of it. The stream probably going to be around two hours. Uh, I would have liked to do a little bit more, but I started a bit late, unfortunately, and I'm not going to stay up later than I normally do just for the sake of uh, hitting a, an arbitrary number that I've made up in my head. But god dang, it's a beast. And they use 8K textures all over, and my 16-core machine, it took me 10 minutes to load a tree. <laughs> just a tree. Crikey. Crikey, partly. That's, uh, that's an achievement. Well, hopefully you finished loading it anyway, right? <laughs> they have better computers than you. Okay, let's think about this now. So, we need some form of, like, uh, we need to come up with some names to call these. So, uh... I don't know if we call it keyboard input um, tracker. I don't know if tracker is the right word for it. We could call it minigame input, but minigame is a bit generic. But it does, yeah, it does, it does imply that it's for a certain purpose, right? So we could have a tracking actor, for example. We may want uh, like some form of manager that would uh, keep track of all of these that need to go and whether they've succeeded or failed or anything like that. Uh, so we could do it like that. This would be the... Uh, the owning class that keeps uh, uh, spawns and manages the uh, tracking actors always exists and other classes can get access to it and then we have our minigame uh, tracking actor so this is the well I guess describe the requirements and rules, I guess, rule set to be followed in the game, in the mini game. Uh, and th this can include things such as uh, what is the required combination of keys of input key to win, uh, what type of yeah, what is the, I guess, maybe the, the, maybe, um, I'm trying to think, I would a, okay, it could have like a rule override setting that will um, override the, the input trackers rule set uh, if needed. So uh, it will also, this should also have a rule set what counts as a fail, success, and uh, like all rules are regarding uh, inputting the correct keys. Are you uh, looking at that project partly then to try and get a bit of a more insight into that tool you've been using with landscaping recently, or is it part of the course that you're doing? I might have you for a long time if you're loading that. The course was poop. Well, that's no good, is it? Was it a random course? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you don't... You, what I find what I get a lot of advantage from is watching someone who's used software and, and does this for their job, for example, and watching the way they go about achieving their objectives using the tools. So you can see what tools they use and their, their way of tackling problems in that environment. Uh, and yeah, you don't often get that with courses. Quite often with courses you get, here's how all of these buttons work and what they do.
Right, yeah, okay, I hear what you're saying, partly. Yeah, you're going around the right, uh, the right kind of approach, though, opening examples and trying to poke around and understand it. Respect you, dude. Uh, it's a course on the only that you like, but the instructor has a heavy French accent and is transcribing from an earlier French course, so a lot of the design is already done. Right, okay. Is the French accent a negative thing for you? <laughs> okay. All right. Um. How how do we hold the rules? So this would be. I guess we would make a. If the, if this is an A, I guess it would be an actor. This would be an a, an actor as well, right? Uh, this would probably be an F uh, minigame input uh, rule set. I guess, and we'd need to set some things in there. Uh, it's hard to really think about it. We're going to probably just have to get started and, and take it from there, I think. But not having strong command of English. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, communication is key in learning, so. Uh, do you ever hang out in um, a rural games this stream? Partly. I know she she's done quite a lot with environmental stuff. And she's really nice and to, to talk to if you if she knows you very rarely. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, like I she's someone I know who do, who's done quite a bit with environment setup stuff, but I it may not be the same though. I mean you could always uh get a money back money day uh money back guarantee if you feel it didn't give you what you wanted. Uh, anyways, anyways. Oh, did you actually try? Oh, is that how it works? Is it like Steam? If you played for more than X, then you can't get your refund. Crafty little hobbits. Does, uh, so it does mistype reset chain yeah um you could also have oh that would be a ball i guess sorry all right let, let's just try and make these classes i'm quite happy with this as a general uh um kind of setup and let's just give it a go and see where we get to do, 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 do. uh where do i want to be let's close down these i've got a content browser in here so let's go ahead and make a couple of classes so in here, we want to go ahead first off, we want to make a new generic class, just an actor. I think it needs to be an actor, right? I mean... You can, there's like an A info you can do sometimes. It, like, it doesn't actually need to be an actor here, but... I think we're going to just do it an actor for the sake of ease here. Let's make an actor. Uh, this is going to be called, what did I call it? A, a minigame uh, input. No, input minigame or minigame input, did I call it? Minigame input tracker, yeah. Do I call it tracker manager? <laughs> no, it, it tracks. That's all it is, right? And then we have individual actors to do it. That's what we care about, right? Its job is to track input. Doesn't matter how it does it, that's what we've got to think about here. So let's go ahead and create this. Uh, have I done public and private folders thus far in my project? I'm not too sure if I have. Where's my um, solution explorer? Do I have public private? I do not. Okay, great. Let's carry on that way then. Let's create that to begin with. Yeah, I watched four of 16 hours at two times speed. Ah. Some of my content, yeah, okay, fair enough. I, I, I also do feel like if there's something wrong with the course, then a refund. But if it just wasn't quite what you needed, it's also a bit tough because like the content is not always the content creator's fault, right? That it wasn't that gap that you lacked. I'm not saying this is true of you partly, but if I was uh, making resources, it 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 bother me if people kept getting refunds just because 
it did it didn't tick this imaginary kind of box that they have that will solve their gap in their knowledge but i'm sure that's the case you know, we have a bit of a uh a, a, we, we we have a bit of a, a refund culture i think america especially from my understanding of how elisha talks anyway where you can just get your money back they absorb the cost and I feel bad for some companies where, you know, they can't resell what has gone out, but they have to kind of accept their refund. Uh, that that stuff must be difficult for smaller businesses to to, to keep up w with big businesses who can kind of just absorb that cost. Why don't you do the wrong size socks? Well, if you bought them and they were size 10 and you know you're a size 5, then part of it is like, well, you made a mistake. Uh... But I don't think we'd like that, do we? We don't like that. We we prefer to be, no, I know my rights. <laughs> but if they said they were a size 10 and then they were actually a, a size 15, then I think you would go and say, hey, I th this doesn't meet the description. So it, it's a tricky one. I know it, it, not all um, cases will be met. I am just making up my feelings about this on the spot as well, so keep in mind they may not be fully uh, fleshed out. Okay, so we want to make another actor again. Uh, hey, I bought 15 pairs of these socks. They don't fit. I've tried them all on. I'd like to... Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 there's lots of different uh, environments here, isn't it? Where... Yeah. I, I think that's a good example of how but that would change between product and product right as well anyway uh right what do we want to call this this was going to be a mini game input tracking actor Whoop. like that create that and then we'd like to make a struct as well i don't know if you can make code structs uh just like uh, from here oh yeah i bet i bet partly atomic I think the only exception you'd get away uh, that kind of avoids it a bit is probably like underwear and stuff for like sanity, uh, not sanity, sorry, uh, sanitation reasons, for health reasons. Right, can we create a new uh, struct? I don't know if you can. Oh, back. Oh, you can just make a new struct. I wonder how... Struct script. Actually, can you actually do that, though? Let's just try this, shall we? Mini game input rule set. Is that what I said we'd call it? Yeah, we did. Oh, it doesn't seem to like us doing this. Does it? Uh, this might be because of what we're deriving from. Yeah, you can't just do it straight from struct. Okay, that's fine. We'll we'll just make our own struct in the in a an empty file. That's not a problem. <laughs> Yeah, so we do somewhat have it a little more straightforward, don't we? Uh, okay, so look, we've got these classes now. Uh, I might as well close this down. It did say it needed to reload this. We're going to first create our uh, one more file in here. So we don't have types yet, but we're just going to make a quick um, header file. And this is going to be called our mini game import rule set oh we should put it in the right folder as well i hate that it never gets the right folder there source there you go so let's create that uh i've done a u struct uh oh, have i got find everything on this oh i don't uh maybe we can just find it on google a quick like 
UE4 struct boilerplate. Is this modern, I wonder? Oh, is this really a page? <laughs> is this really? <laughs> Great, thank you. <laughs> Okay, this this probably looks. Is this a uh, struct generated body? Yeah, this this will do the job. Thank you, whoever you are, Hanzo Chang. I think uh, I I think it's so it's not generated struct body. I think it's generated body on everything these days, right? So this is what we want for this. This is going to be called our mini game input. Uh, rule set, like so. Uh, we will take that and we will whack that in here then. Does it have a constructor? It doesn't at the moment. Awesome int and an awesome float. I like this. Okay, they then have themselves a... What is this? Syntax. Oh, I haven't seen that syntax before. Whoop. I think this is meant to be the... the constructor. Let's do uh, let's let's do this a bit, a bit more my way, shall we? I don't think they take out object initializers because they're not objects, are they? Oh. I don't know actually. No, I've said that aloud. I'm doubting myself. Okay, uh, let's also go ahead and make the CPP of this while we remember new item uh, CPP this time in the same place. Yeah, and we'll give it the name that we require. Get rid of the F. Kapow. Okay, and then we can take the... This. Wow. Okay. Okay, we don't need to do my project. But we do need to do minigame input rule set. Like that. We will jump into this. And we will... It returns... Oh, so this is a way to make a new one, is it? This is... Yeah, I've not seen this syntax before. Like, uh, typically, a, a constructor will just give you a return a new one anyway. You don't need to return it, right? This is just one, when you make one with new object, this is... I, I don't know. Oh no, it's not even with a new object. When you make a new one, this is what it'll, how it'll follow it, right? Yeah, I'm not too sure why it's doing this, but anyway, we've got some format that we can steal. Let's get rid of these. <laughs> exactly, Halt C. Well, it turns out I don't really want... Um, it doesn't seem to do the job for me. <laughs> I'm having to change it all. Uh, okay, so let, let's think uh, just a couple of the things that we, we want in here. We're probably going to have a ball blueprint. I don't like as capital P on the blueprint. Read, read right there as well. It's actually incorrect, isn't it? Uh, Anyway, okay, so the first thing we want to say is should reset on error. Uh, no, hmm. What do we call it when you put the wrong thing in? We could call it a uh, mistake, miskey, mistype, mistype, probably. So should reset on mistype. Let's just start with that. And then we'll, we'll maybe actually, uh, we could do have an int for number of attempts before fail. So if we just did something like that. There are two members there. Let's get rid of this and then we can set these in our constructor there. There we go. The joy of making a class and it taking half of my stream. Shh, it's fine. Uh, 
this should be an in version of it. Take the name of this. Whack that in there. Whack it in before it as well. To be honest, this can be a const as well because we're not doing anything with these bad boys. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Although it's going to be tighter. I don't even know if it's if it's necessary. Yeah, it's not necessary right now. Actually, we can just. Well, although we we are going to have to set one up with a, a proper constructor at one point, right? Hey there, little wood. Nice to see you. How have you been keeping, dude? Uh, I was thinking instead of having uh, our input, let's get rid of these. We don't need this. Uh, uh, we should just go ahead and set the... We need, we need to do a defaults, right? Isn't it like this? And then you go ahead. Well, we, we don't have a super, right? Because it's a struct, so we just need to get our member variables. I'll start listing them out. It's been a while. This helps warm me up for work as well, these streams. Uh, so let's just start with three. We'll give you that's going to be the default value for that. And then uh, should reset on mistype is going to be set to false as a default. And then we do nothing in the body of the constructor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I think, uh, yeah, by here you don't, but by here you do. I think you do anyway. Now you're making me doubt. Have I done any code files in here? Uh, do we have a character in here? Yeah, we do. Okay. So, uh, let, let's start with this. Oh, why has he capitalized the where as well? What's the what's the dude doing? I'm I'm getting less thankful to to Hanzo, Hanzo at the moment. Should have guessed from the name, shouldn't I? Too much Overwatch. Okay, so at this point we need to generate the project files, I believe, because um, we added a bunch of classes and it said you need to reload it. So let's uh, generate Visual Studio project files quickly. Uh, doing better after dad came out of the hospital. Only took like a week for him to get back working in, uh, on his new garage. We just finished dismantling the old one. Uh, how come he was in the hospital? A little bit? I can't remember if you told me, dude. It doesn't ring a bell to me. Or was it COVID-y? Oh, no. Ah, uh, what has actually changed, though? Okay, let's just... Oh, all right. Just save everything, and then we can regenerate project files anyway, right? Uh, ba 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 Do this again. What is UE4? Uh, UE4 is Unreal Engine 4. It's a games engine. So people make computer games uh, using it to provide them with a tool set. To do a lot of the common things that you find in every game, uh, they've done a lot of that work for you, which allows you to build your own logic and your own games around that. Okay, so hopefully now. That'll do. Will it, will it compile for us? And then we need to actually start setting this up. Um, so I'm guessing uh, while that's happening, we should probably... Um, okay, good. We, we were successful with that. Let's pin up what we want to be working on. Input tracker. So the input tracker we'll chuck up here. Well, we'll, we'll probably, we should probably chuck the header of it as well up here. 
we probably want the minigame input rule set. We'll bring you over here. We're probably not going to need so much work. And then we want the minigame actor. I don't know if that's open anymore. So let's uh, minigame input actor. Uh, track, tracker actor, sorry. Tracking actor, that's the boy. This one here. Lock this in here, and then we'll get the header of it open as well and lock that. Okay, th these are the files we're going to be working on today, so let's get them easily accessible. I've seen a whole while, so I was going to do the Nokia jam. Oh, I remember you mentioning the Nokia jam. About a week, woke up 4 a.m. to find paramedics in the front room. Basically, scar tissue from a cancer up three years ago it caused a blockage in his digestive system, causing him to become bloated. Sugar. That's, uh, yeah, that's quite a shock, dude. Um, how's he, how's he doing now then? I, I see you saying he's back to stuff. Is it something that's passed or is it something he needs to be cautious of now? That's pretty serious. Sorry to hear, fella. Yeah. He... Uh... Oh, that's nice to hear. That's nice to hear. Okay, so let's think about this. We're gonna... How would this work? I guess we would have one of these actors in the world, right? And things would get... A reference to it or um so where's our this thing here right so would it have a, a list of them i guess uh, we probably i don't know if we need to tick let's get rid of our tick function quickly shall we get rid of that okay so um what are we gonna have in here we're probably gonna have ourselves an array uh a t array of uh mini game input tracker actors uh, these are going to be A's um, tracker actors we can call it keep that name size a little bit smaller uh, these are going to be pointers to them as well and we're now going to have to get the input for that so let's go ahead and get our tracking actor uh, we can borrow this We'll just whack this in. Well, to be honest, uh, this mm, with an array, I forget. Do you need to do a full include, or can we do still just a... No, it's an array of pointers, isn't it? So it'd still be the same size. So we need to bring that in. This is going to be an A. I'm going to give it tracking actor. Fantastic. Uh, we can get that started in our initialization list. Uh, this I'd like my uh, constructor to have a const f uh, object initializer. I try and be consistent with my constructors. Okay, like so. So let's go ahead and whack that in here. Okay, sweet. Uh, and then first one here we would call super of the actor. Do you have to do this on super? I've completely forgotten. I don't think you do. And then by here, we would do uh, whatever we called it, which is our tracker actors. And that would be initialized as nothing. Okay, great. Again, I'm just going to have a look in the... Oh, we don't have an initialization list there, so... Only took a week for him to get back to normal post-operation. Climbing ladders, lifting heavy things. <laughs> it's very sledge It was me and my sister who had to move all the heavy stuff uh, between the garages. Cast iron vices. I bet they are very heavy. Have you, have you got big old strong muscles now, little wood? Are they calling you giant? No, I was going to call you giant wood then, and that has different connotations, so let's not go down that route. Well, all the best to your dad, man. Hopefully nothing else of that uh, kind of type happens to, to the guy. Uh, I'm wondering why my IntelliSense isn't picking this up as a new thing that we've added. Input tracking actor. Ah, tracker actor. The game input tracking actor and I've put an S at the end of it too. There we go. It's yellow. <laughs> okay, so we'll have a list of them and then we'll probably want to uh, create a new. Well, this will be responsible for creating them as well, right? So we'd need to make a public add new rule. Uh, add new. 
input tracker. Um, and this is going to take in one of those rule sets, I guess, but it might take in more than that. So we need to think about the rule sets are going to be how the whole world, uh, how the whole thing works, right? The thing, the thing with structs is if we can pass in a pointer to a struct, uh, but if you don't do pointers, then how do you know if it's... Boo. Normally with objects, you can just pass like no pointer if you don't want to pass anything with it. And you can say, if it's no pointer, ah, okay, then don't worry about it. But when we're using structs, we got to think a bit differently because you can check an empty struct and you don't really know that it's empty because it could have been intended to be set up that way. Irish John, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome... Mihorities, it's good to see you all. I hope you had a wonderful stream today, Irish John Gaming. Anyone who does know Irish John, he's working on a wonderful pirate game at the moment. Streams regularly, a lovely gentleman as well, so do feel free to check him out. And if you enjoy his content, toss him a follow and hang out in his stream. He's a good guy. Well, from the, the few experiences I've had with him over the years now. Welcome, Ikins. Uh, I'm just doing my monthly game dev challenge where I'm trying to learn about new things in Unreal. Uh, this month has been looking at inputs. We've learned a bit about the input system and I'm trying to make a bit of a generic uh, keyboard mini game input. So if you get a, like a typing game where you have to type the word help, uh, then that we can create a system that would handle that and track whether you've typed in those letters in the right order. If there's mistakes, how does it process that? And to give some feedback back once you have done it successfully, right? So we, we kind of need an on success and an on fail. Uh, that's something else we need to consider here, right? <laughs> Not that sort of pirate. Don't worry about that. Yeah, I'm doing good altogether though, Iris John. Thank you for asking, dude. <sighs> so we don't really know what is going to be added into this, if I'm honest with you. Um... Let's let's try and hypothesize roughly what we would want in here. So we would want uh, what is uh, an array of input keys to add. Uh, that's one thing we'd want. We'd probably want. Does it have a custom rule set? I mean, maybe that doesn't need to be in the constructor. Maybe we can do that as a set, a manual function that we can call. But I'm trying to think what would be set in it. I think this is, should also probably return the reference to it. So we're actually not going to return nothing. We're going to return a minigame uh, input tracking actor pointer when we create one of these. Uh, custom rule set. It could be an optional parameter, right? But again, how do you, you check does it exist? Because a, it'd be an empty struct. Uh, maybe a pointer to a struct. Um, what? Well, uh, we 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 also need a like on success. We need to pass. Uh, we need to do something, right? And we need a on fail. So we could make these just. Um, I mean, we could pass in a delegate handle reference, and then we just broadcast that. Uh, I don't like the name. I don't like the sound of that. We could pass in a, a function, a T function maybe, where we say what we want to do when it's successful, and that could be set from anywhere in the code then maybe. Okay, uh, and also we got to think, how, how, what is the diff how are we going to actually take these inputs? Hmm. Uh, I mean, we've we've been looking at on like on key down stuff in the input player input. So, what? How do we store the keys? Is it F keys? Is this the type? I'm not sure this is what I want to be looking for. <laughs> this is what I want to be looking for. So F key can have a key name.
It has other members, right? Does it? Key details it has. Uh, we have stuff for Axis input here, or is this a different class now? Yeah, these are different. This is a, a struct now. This is all we got up here for the F key. I'm wondering if F key is what we use. I, I'm basically trying to think what we'd want the array to be set up of. It might be F keys. Uh, we can have a little a peep online just to see if we can get some reassurance of that. Uh, data type for input keys in uh, UE4. Uh, let's go CPP so we don't get a bunch of blueprint answers as well. Uh, yeah, these action mappings. What do, uh, what does the action mapping take in? Uh, do we have an action map? Uh, let's try and find this uh, this array. Uh, that's in the in the, we don't want that. Okay, action mappings here. Input action mapping. What are the two things we got in here? We got an action name. And then we got an F key here. Yeah, it does seem that key is what we use. Okay. So based on that then I believe we would probably want a Uh, a T array of F keys as our input. Yeah, no problem, Littlewood. Uh, I'll be on for another hour or so. So if you're still going by the time you get back, feel free to pop in and say hi. If not, have a great start to your week, dude. I'll catch you again soon. Okay, um, so this is going to be an F key array of... Um, what would we call this? This is our, like, our goal... We, we need to have a, a name for this, like our input. Yeah, we also need to know whether the sequence is important. Like, do you just have to press any of these keys in any order? That's going to be part of the rule set, I guess, right? So as we think about this, we can add them to our rule set. Um, it uh, should be... It's, um, sequential... Or not, I guess, I guess, what's the right word for this? This is just going to be a ball as well. Does order matter? <laughs> That'll do for now. We can rename these, we're, nothing, we're not precious about the names of them for now. I just want to keep working instead of getting hung up on things that don't matter. Okay, so desired input. Keys. Inputs. Uh, that input implies there's more than more of them. Uh, we might want a T function. Uh, cry key. Why can I not remember the syntax of this? Do you do this? Is that how you do a T function of the type? Uh, on success function pointer. And then we probably want uh, the same thing here. Uh, and let's, this would be an on fail function pointer. We basically want, we're going to, our input system is going to have to do a handle, uh, do a, uh, you pass in the, the chain of like the flow of logic over to a new actor and you need to let whatever's added this. So let's say, I don't know, a dialogue thing pops up. You press okay. That creates this new actor. 
we need to somehow pass that logic back. And I'm trying to think of the, the way that we would achieve that right now. Uh, I'm probably just asking aloud. Don't even worry about it. I'm just mumbling aloud. Uh, Uh, like so, a way to get around that struct thing would be a bool has custom uh, like rule set, and then you'd have separately the f uh, minigame input rule set uh, custom rule set. That is a bit nasty. I don't particularly like that. I also don't know if you can set defaults for structs in that way. I know you, we could do this, right? We can say something like that to, to default it to, to false, but I don't know how you would do that for a struct initialization. Let's start with this. And we'll take it from there. So we add a new input tracker. Let's uh, create this implementation. We also need to uh include this at this point and we've already got a tracking actor so that's fine we need to return a pointer to one that is okay excellent so now we can go ahead and try and define stuff in here so what we want to do is to create a new one of these uh a spawning of an actor the actor doesn't need to exist anywhere um We maybe want to set these up from an asset, right? That's what I'm trying to think of, like, all the different types of inputs that you might want to set out. Because you might want to set it from string. This desired input, you might want to give it a string, and then it breaks down that string into characters and turns them into keys. Like, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Hmm. I at least want to get that idea down. Ooh. We have a variant where we pass a string. Automatically convert, uh, breaks it down and converts to, uh, and the respective f keys uh, you'd imagine there's a function for like a f key for for like a character but there may not be as well and then we it'd be a bit of a work a massive switch statement that i can imagine hello there hexadonut nice to see you Let's keep going in this ugly way at the moment. But what I'm trying to think of is like, how are we going to actually create these? Because you can write them in code, but the reality is we probably want to set up some of these mini game actors in, as an asset. And then it would be like, choose a random one from this list. Or we could plug in a particular blue uh, setup. Basically, the setup is nicer in editor because you can tweak it in editor and then run it. So it'd be nice if we could read it in from that. So it might be worth setting up a a struct that would hold all of this information. However, I don't, how, we're not going to be able to represent the function pointers, right? But we can set up... These won't, but we can wrap these into a struct. Uh, and if then we make that struct public, we can then make that an asset, and then you can plug in that asset, and we can take in an asset of that type. Or we can even specify the struct, but it just means we can't reuse it if we do it that way. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. 
That's my problem most of the time. I'm trying to think of the best way. It's hard to know the best way when you don't understand the whole thing you're making yet. It might be handy for us to make a structure hold these, but maybe let's, let's maybe that can be a refactor for now. Let's start it this way. No blue, no um, like blueprint setup. So we do this from code only at the moment, I guess. So when we get one of these, we essentially want to go ahead and spawn a new actor. Um, this is where I forget the spawn actor logic. Crikey. UE45. Spawn location. Ah, get world spawn actor. That is it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. I think this is going to be zero 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 at the moment. We could we could do a private uh, transform and just set it as a, a place where all of them will go to, rather than zero 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 because it could clutter things up. But we'll do, we can do that another time. At this point, we want to spawn a. Hey there, Artifax. Lovely to see you. How are you doing, dude? Uh, we want this to be a minigame input tracking actor. And uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. Static class, that's fine. Is that a... Is it as simple as that? I think there's different ways that you can do it. Let's see if there's other uh, results to that. I'm quite happy with that, but... I have some anxiety. Tax season and my wife decided to not do any accounting all year. Hmm. Uh, how, why did um, she decide on that? Or was it not a decision, but a neglect, maybe? Do they have an example? Here we go. You can give it a name as well, is it? Of name, in name, location, rotation. Probably a few overrides, is there? Oh, you can just call spawn actor. You don't even need to do get world, do you? Yeah, this stuff. We kind of need it back, right? I guess we don't actually need any of the extra parameters. So for now, I guess we can go ahead and do it this way. Neglect for sure, no mileage on the vehicle, no expenses to put into accounting software. Uh, I gotta go chill. All right, no problem, dude. No problem. But yeah, it's easy to be frustrated about these things, but there's probably, I don't know if it's willful neglect or whether there's more reasons to it, but when things are chilled out, have a discussion about it rather than a you've done everything wrong discussion because that doesn't often result in much uh, satisfaction for either party. Have a good one, dude. Okay, so we want to spawn this. Uh, but then we want to go ahead and we, we need to get it back, right? Uh, uh, tracking actor. Let's call it that. Is that, do they all cast actually? And can that casting looks ugly. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, you can cast it that way. I don't want to cast it that way. Maybe I should read this instead of. Hmm. 
Compared to the classes which inherit from the actor class. Okay. Usage here. Yeah, this I'm wondering why we why do we have to cast it like that? I don't like that so much. Uh, several function templates have been provided. The most common usage patterns. These are creating actors much simpler. They require a smaller subset of parameters. Allow the type of the returned actor to be specified. Lovely. Okay. Uh, so instance of the same location with the same rotation as the root component of the actor performance. One of rotation it returns a point to the instance. That's fine by me. Uh, the only actor is the game pawn, and whether this one of rotation should fail. Uh, can be specified, but don't need to be by the looks of it. Okay, so usage of that would just be spawn actor. So sh for me, this seems like we, we don't need to do get world. We should just be able to do spawn actor. Let's try and follow what the documentation says. Uh, and based on this as well, we do need this. Uh, we may not need to pass in the static class. We might just pass in the instigator, is it? Uh, owner, yeah. Sorry, not the instigator. Uh, so we can just pass this and instigator in. Like, do we have to have the instigator? Yeah, can that be defaulted? Might be easier to, for us to jump to spawn actor. Actor factory, is it in here? Hmm. They all seem to be... Invaders Must Die. That's a classic uh, Prodigy song. I'm not reading all of that out, and I've skipped straight to the punchline, Mr. Barog. <laughs> You're a fool. Okay, how you doing, uh, dude? Nice to see you. I hate that, like, little basic things like spawning an actor. I, str I, I don't have confidence in. My spawn actor feels like a, a static function that is, like, is it part of any of actor? If you can call it from within another actor? I guess it'd be a return type, right? It'd be a type. Yeah, we're not going to just find it that way. We don't really care about the the transform here, but I guess we've. Do, but this this would be similar, right? Default. Own class. That location. That location. I'm just wondering about the. I I don't want an instigator here, but I don't know. Does it actually require one? Well, we can try it and just see whether it can pause without, I guess. But I got a feeling it would need one. Is it even... Let's just see what happens. <laughs> it frustrates me that I do this day to day, but uh, spawning act the logic, I'm just like, hmm. Why is there like six different answers on the internet about how to do it? And why can't I figure out where this bloody function is? F mini game input tracking actor. Oh, we haven't done an include for that one yet, so that's fine. Oh my gosh, it's the wonderful jam hats. It is good to see your beautiful face. Thank you, dude. It's good to see your beautiful scripture as you write in the chat in your sub message. Nice to see you, dude. Thank you very much for the continued support. 37 month of subscriptions. That's a lot of subscriptions. If I had a house, you'd be paying off my mortgage. Thank you, good sir. Uh, we wanted to take this file, right? 
and go back to where we were having uh, issues. Okay, so let's uh, do that. Do we need anything else in here? Maybe not. Dan's landlord thanks you for investing into his property. <laughs> that, that'll do, eh? I did actually pay my rent today as well, so it's very fresh. I always get happy after pay. I'm like, look at the money I've got, and then I'm like, hang on. Let's, let's remember how much goes out. Oh, we need to, uh, the rule set as well. Borrow this. Ah, how are you doing, Jay? How's your day been? How's your weekend been? Elisha just sent me a picture of me in the supermarket holding a leak. I was trying to be Farfetch'd, the Pokemon. Wonderful. That's from a while ago as well. <laughs> she just randomly sent it now. Yeah, well, you better watch yourself. Right, good. Spawn actor. It doesn't know what spawn actor is. Right. That's, that's kind of what we're... Oh, there she is. Hello. So... Where does the spawn... It? I feel like I really need to learn this, but I don't want to lose the whole stream to look into this sort of stuff, but... See if uh, in this... I've seen this thread before. Get world spawn. I, I think you do have to give the world to it. I'm just wondering why in that documentation. So let's have a look in world, should we? So let's go into the world class and have a look at the spawning functions. Okay, so spawn actor. There we go. We got a bunch of them in here. So how many of them can we take? Ah, you can do default um, parameters. You remember earlier I was saying, I don't know if we can do defaults uh, if it's a struct? Well, huzzah, you can. The class type of parameter, well, the return is a parent uh, of that class. Okay, there's quite a few of them. We can look at the um, signatures here, I guess. It's a bit tiny, but we can still look. Uh, so you can do one with the spawn parameters. You can one a uh, location, rotation, and stuff. We don't care about that. Are these templated then? Yes, they are. So can you do one without uh, any of those? Like I don't want to give spawn parameters, but I guess we. Oh no! Yeah, there's a, there's a default one. Okay, so we should be able to literally just go. Without any anything, we should be able to do that. Let's see, does that count? So it makes sense to me why we have to go via the world to spawn an actor, right? Because everything belongs to the, the world, so to speak. Oh, we need to return something as well. So let's just return a null pointer. Actually, no, I mean, we've got it. So we can, we can just do it that way if we want. Okay, just give us a compile and then we can start carrying on. There we go, okay. So we're going to spawn one and then we need to add it to our, our array once we've set it up. Um, yeah, it, it's a tricky one. This uh, is the, the whole architecture of how we would handle this. Would we let the actor do it or would the, the kind of manager handle the callbacks uh, or like what to do at the end of it? Well, we also got to think, do, would we want to, with the constructor for this? Can you give a bunch of parameters to the 
No, I think you just make a default one, don't you? And then you'd have to set it up, I guess. So what, what do we have in here? So I guess we, we'll try and handle some of the logic we got. Let's just get the ball rolling because at the moment I feel a bit overwhelmed with uh, what we're doing. So if it has one of that, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to set the new tracking actor dot... Um, I don't know if we have... We can make that, I guess, and we can pass in the custom rule set, like so. What you have to? Thank you. Well, Mr. Bruin Bob, how nice to see you. Hello there. Um, so let's pass that there. Oh, it's a spacey as well. Crikey. Feeling like old times. Um, let's just do that for now. So let's uh, make ourselves... Uh, in this class, we want to make this function. This needs to be public. Let's whack it up there. It doesn't need a bloody tick. Let's get rid of the tick for now. Okay, so in here we want to go ahead. It's going to be a void. We don't do anything with it. Uh, this needs to take in an F minigame rule set. Uh, we can do it as a reference, I guess. We're not going to be changing it either. So we can do it as a const reference to this struct. Uh, this is going to be in rule set. Okay, that's good with me. Let's implement this. And then we do a, a few things in here. We'd, I guess we'd have members in here. Uh, it might be even private rather than protected at this point. So we'd want a ball. Didn't we, hang on, haven't we always already done this? Or was this all part of that struct that I did? No, no, no. Uh, a custom rule set E, that was. Okay, so that's going to be set and then we're going to have to store it, I guess, right? Uh, would we store a pointer to that, I'd, uh, or would it, if it's a ref, or would we pass a pointer in anyway? I feel we're making a copy, but if we're not changing it, and we're not going to change it dynamically, then co copies are fine. I know, Spacey, my dear friend, how are you? I hear you didn't sleep massively well due to being a lady. A lady? But I also saw your monstrous produce, which was impressive in its own way. Uh, where are we at? Well, soon, Spacey. Um, as much as it is a, a, a tragedy that D. Alicia is having to, for, for now at least, pop back to the States, it does mean that I may be able to change my stream time up a little bit as well. And when she comes back, she'll be coming back with her own, uh, with a computer and that of her own in mind and a desk and that. So we, we might be able to, she can, I can start my evening stream when she's finishing hers. So it might be a bit more sociable hours then. It's not Elisha's fault. <laughs> it's just uh, finding a good way to coincide together. Don't, don't start that. We'll have, we'll have fights later. The bags will be out on the street. <laughs> Okay, uh, this is fine for now. So this means in here, if we're setting it, we would set a has custom rule set. We get to set, pass, uh, set to true, but defaults not true. And then we'd say our rule set is going to be equal to this, right? Okay, sweet. So that's fine for now. Uh, what else would we want to do on this thing? I'm also going to move my... Uh, begin play function up. I like to have the actor default functions at the top. Um, would we call set input or... So 
So uh, we've got to think what we're getting passed in here. So we had the desired inputs. Again, we're going to have to pass that into the actor, right? So I guess we would... That we're just doing an initializator, initialization function, I guess. The other one would be... So let's go ahead and set this as a void init tracking actor. So this would take in the same parameters as we had here to an extent. Uh, not all of them, but we'll copy and delete as needed. So we'd need that. Would we need the T function? I think we would. Or we would just broadcast to its parents. Well, it depends. Uh, We could always, like, the, the parent thing could hold an array of all of the callbacks. Rather than just passing a function along along, it could spawn itself add to an array of existing ones. Or a, a T-map even. Or, no, not a T-map. It might be a struct of, like, an actor pointer and then its callback functions. And then when it finishes, the, the child one can broadcast to say, I finished. The parent can, or the owning manager can uh, bind to that when it creates it. Um, I don't know if there's any better. We might as well just pass it on, though. I don't. We still don't need to know about the um, the manager from the tracking actor here if we'd pass it through. So I think we might just stick to this. We'll pass these three functions, these things through. Uh, let's create this then. Come on, give me the chance. To create this fight. Oh, come on, you swine. Oh, I haven't put a semicolon at the end. It's my own fault, everybody. Create that implementation. Again, it's going to go above begin play. Uh, I'm okay. I got to see the cats and I played my songs for my dad. Did your dad enjoy the music? Spacey, I didn't see... I, I didn't have it with volume. Your piano, I should have, but I didn't, because it was on my phone. So I'll have to listen back to it some other time. <laughs> Studying for your COVID test. Yeah, you got to pass it now, I'm new. Okay, so I think, again, we're going to have to just uh, do a bunch of members here, which is a little bit, a little bit annoying, but... Kind of going to be just this, right? So if we just do it like this, I guess. Uh, I, th I feel like these can be at the end. We should uh, set these then in a. Uh, these into the oh I forgot you gotta pass the object initialization into that but I think it was a struct we're doing before so we wouldn't have to do it for that then we need to get all of our members whack these in here if it's an array, you don't really initialize that. I think these can just be initialized as null pointers. A T function. I believe, anyway. Let's get that in there. Place this with a, one of those. That's, uh, this one should be false. And then uh, this custom rule set will just be initialized to be the default constructor of that. That is fine. Uh, you should not be able to tick. Let's get rid of that as well. 
Hello there, FB Design. How you doing? Uh, we're all talking about I'm definitely a minute or come like. You have shadow come like. I'm spelled to your compare key, but then shadow come like. I'm vivid or I'm sad. Yeah, um, so it's not a young day. Rehin, Tanish, Kyle, Annie Waski in Nampo Pino Rain. Just the Wahani Hung parameters into the mail, not actual uh, members. So decided to put some video call a right hen Mahon Well now I went in I'll be call it in Olaf Well now okay bro So I need a Decker Cray new now fast epic right to need Cray So a bit Randy Hefford coffee on Marine and Vindical input. Hmm. So Marine and Vindical crave all their input map, their input component. I got so deep on the the banana rain. Then he is ah oh, sugar. Yeah, my hand and point. So Pope Trauma in Ru Mount Burden Cali a Rai Mount the knee should track of it Agam Hari if I bid the knee in there to him. Hmm. Yeah, you'll have to. Hello there, FB Design. You also have a question. Do I know how to connect a virtual graphics card to a server? Uh, no. I have I don't even know what virtual graphics card is. If I'm honest with you, I'd imagine what's that way is is that one of those kind of services where you a game is played on a remote computer and streamed to you? Or are we talking about like virtual memory and it's what your your CPU behaving like a a graphics processor? Yeah, it's getting long enough. I can I can tie it up again. Just it's a tiny bit, but not enough. It goes everywhere. It looks a mess. Okay, yeah. So I don't know what uh I know what a server is, but I don't know what a virtual graphics card is. So uh, well, the answer is no anyway. I guess. Brainioid, forty-two months. Hey, now that's a flipping streak. A tier three, not one, not two, three, ladies and gentlemen. What a wonderful boy. And uh, I did laugh at your comment internally, basically, when I was speaking Welsh. You said I could have just spat on the keyboard and you would have been proud of me like a dad. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> uh, so we were, we were trying to... Uh, thank you, you too, Littlewood. You too. I hope you, you had some good focus then, dude. So we we need to now think about um, it needs to have an input component s set up on it, right? So I guess in the constructor, we should we have the allow input on by default? Um, auto input something. Also receive input like that. Ah. Okay, I mean, it's an enum. Play a zero. Okay, it, it would be that. So let's go ahead and set this to be what they want it to be. Hopefully, we don't need an include for that. What I'm working on, Sally? No, okay, David, no. Ah, this being Hopefully, yeah, indeed, indeed. That's the positive way to look at it, good sir. Uh, Brainoid, how are you? Thank you for pulling yourself away from the world of Valheim. J j just say hi and share a moment with your old friend, Dan. Okay, so this should create an input. Uh, well, does that create one automatically, I think? We, should, we could check the input stack, right, and, and see whether or not it's on there. Whether that does enough. Okay, but what we need to try and think about with these input systems is... Uh, 
Okay, we, we're going to have to bind. We bind to any input rather than binding everything, any key we want to know about. Yeah, I'm trying to. Um... Pretty sure you can. Because there's an on key down, right? Man, these are from like seven years ago. Yeah, Halty and Benjo have been playing quite a lot of it as well. It's an any key event, is it? Yeah, but we don't, we can, uh, this isn't quite what we want. Uh, there might be an any, actually. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so in the input component, we want to set up some binding, right? So every actor has an input component. We did some uh, write-up about, thank you, Survivor House. How you doing? Nice to see you. Um, in our document where we were studying how the input system works at the moment, we did some notes on how we set up the actual bindings as well. So in here, for input component, right? We bind uh, actions. So we'd, we'd go, if um, input component, we should have one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do, check if auto receive input will create an input component. I mean, I also don't th don't think we need to do this in begin play because we don't want to do this until this happens anyway, right? Because if not, if this doesn't happen, then we would just want to do input component enable. You can create one, right? I think it's like enable input that. And that would go ahead and make an input component if I remember correctly. No, that's gone to Magic Leap. What the flip is Magic Leap? Surely, uh, I swear. Enable input here. <laughs> da, 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 da. And we'd have to give the player controller, but that's fine. Okay. Uh, let's go back. So if not, we would need to do enable, uh, and then we'd just get get first play controller. Is there or oh. uh. oh no no no, that's the wrong function. Flipping it, how many? It took me a while then, didn't it? We'd do something like that if not, but um, we do that in a short while. Well. Uh, Space has a very important question. Are there cats in Valheim? Hello, Wormy. It's nice to see you, dude. <clears throat> okay, so input component. If true, then we want to set it up. So we'd say input component dot bind action. So it's action name and the input key. So I don't know whether we could just. Whether you can do it like this, or whether we'd need to make a, qu a quick, like... I mean, we could do it private as well, I guess it doesn't really matter. We basically just want to... we don't want to have to keep making a, a struct every time. But I think it's only going to be called once. But this is the kind of structure we do this in work so i guess we would then just say we want a const f name uh called uh any key uh action name which is going to be equal to i think you can create an f name with a text right Uh, 
if we just call it that, and pass that as our action name. Oh, we'd have to quantify it by the namespace, right? Which was a mini game, that thing. Hello there, Pomo. Nice to see you, good sir. And then, is there the any? Oh, hang on. We need to say pressed. I guess it would. Would it be released, or would we do it on pressed? Uh, since it's not like jumping and stuff like that, I think pressed would be fine. And then we need to say, oh, crikey, hang on. This is binded by action. What if we want to do it by key? Hmm. See that you do your bindings in your, in your options. So we need to find out, can we make this action? Can we bind that to any key in the in the in e, I guess right oh you literally you can just g give the f name like that hex donut that's a really weird emote <laughs> let, let, let's see if we can do that anyway okay uh what's the other parameters we need in here the object thing I'm not too sure is that just gonna be a Do we have our action bind action? Okay, let's just look for a couple of these. Quickly make sure we got the right syntax. I'm guessing it's going to be a this there and then we, yeah, and then we do a function pointer. Uh, we can do this, which is something I like. Um, oh, now, we want to call this function, right? But I, uh, will it pass through what comes with it? That's what I'm, that's what I don't get at the moment. Like the alternative is we can bind for every F key in here, we can make a binding. Uh, and then we can make it uh, call a function and pass. Passed it with it a parameter, but oh, I don't understand the syntax here. If we can you pass parameters in this is something I don't know. So this is essentially saying that whenever this button is pressed, then we want to call this execute this function pointer, but I don't know whether we can pass a parameter through and how we would do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why we do these things though, right? Build up uh, experiences and it becomes more second nature the more you do it yeah i mean none of these will take in a if it's an axis it takes in something right but okay what about these axis then move forward then hold on hold on find axis no th this will just I don't think the action passes through anything with it. The more you do it, Pat, what is in the playing around and keeping versed. Ah, E keys actually, rather than an F key. I wonder if we would want to use that. Is that just an enum list of all the different... That might be more of what I'm... I'm not 100%. Not 100% with that. But uh, effectively, this is like a delegate, this binding here, right? And so we can't change... There's going to be a broadcast, effectively, so we can't change what parameter. Oh, I, what, what I want to know is... Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I was thinking you could have it where any key is pressed, we get called a function. And when that is called, we can then say, what was the button that was pressed? And then do a different action based on that. However, what might need to happen is we might need to bind to everything that's in that array. No, but then you'd need to do it multiple times. Oh, shh, shh. this is getting complicated fast, isn't it?
This isn't going to help us, me looking at this class here. So, okay, let me write down some thoughts so we don't just keep going around in total circles at the moment. So my thoughts, let me just... Uh, should we make this function quick so it stops complaining as well, and then we can... I don't know if it has to be a U function. For these, let's, uh, should we have a look at this? Is this a U function? No, it doesn't need to be a U function for this. I think we're just giving it a function pointer rather than the Unreal Header tool being responsible for it. Okay. We also have too many of those. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and make a... One of these. Thank you for the follow, by the way. Dimon 1165 it's nice to have you. Welcome to the stream. Okay, so let's make that very quickly. We're just going to do nothing. Uh, is it temp? Log temp. I got a feeling I, my syntax is wrong here. No, it is total log temp. That's fine. We did it correct. Okay, that should shut up that at least. So we got a function callback for that. But we want to kind of bind any key. Uh, we're not going to have any input into no. So this isn't going to work as we want it. But, so what I was trying to think of then is how we could achieve what I've got in mind here. So uh, approach one, find out how uh, to manually hook in to the on keyboard down event. Uh, the downside to this, we aren't really going to be to be using the input component stack. So I kind of don't want to do that way. Approach two would be um, iterate over our inputs, our uh, array of desired inputs and make bindings for each input. Uh, issues or hurdles, let's call them, because we've got to get over them somehow. So uh, we will need to what if the same letter is input twice. Also, how do we know, what do we bind it to? Hmm. Oh, yeah, we've got to think. Oh, no, well, I'll get her. Uh. I guess we could do, we can make a T function of what it binds to. which in its own right will define what the key is based on the key that's set up here. That could work. Uh, we, uh, we want this to be generic, right? So we can't have... Can uh, manually bind keys to specific functions like on P pressed that sort of ship. So my thoughts are, we could uh, iterate over the array 
I don't, you, it's, this isn't like a lambda though, you can't like... I still feel we're gonna lack the input. What I, I essentially want to do is like bind to a generic function with a parameter of the key that was just pressed. That's kind of what I want to do. So I'd like this to be something like if you imagine like a lambda instead where we would just do um on function pressed, uh, sorry, on input pressed, but uh, we would be taking in, we'd be iterating over this array, right? So we'd be passing in our uh, uh, current desired input, and we would kind of want to pass along that current desired dot uh, f key or something like that. I... That's what we'd want our lambda to call. So then every time that the, we we bind every key to that same function. This is tricky because it's like an arbitrary amount of. Um... You could have a whole sentence, right? You could, the example we had is a mini game thing where you have to type in the word that help H E L P and then you've won the mini game, right? So for that, we would go through and we'd loop over. We want to bind the input of H, but the things so we're not binding for flipping keys either. This is for, uh, the, the reason it's not for keys is because would we need to make actions for each one of those keys? Yeah, it's a very, very nice scope. Help. Like, so at the moment, the, the, the Unreal input system is you, you bind with these action names and you set up the action names and associate them with keys. I'm wondering if... We end up doing some action mappings instead. Or we can actual buy we can buy to actual keys. And then we would need to go ahead and bind those to a function. Yeah, this is a tricky, tricky little um, way to achieve this. Because uh, if we go into the bind action function then in here, Finds a delegate function to an action defined in the pro uh, project settings. Can you do, uh, I mean, is there different ways? Bind action. All of them seem to take. It's an action name, right? Can you bind key? What else we got in here? Input component, we want to be looking down here. Add action binding. Find action. Find key. Maybe it's the key we want to do. Find a chord event to a delegate function. Return reference is only guaranteed to be valid until another input is. Okay, that's that's fair, that's fair. Um Okay, we I don't know if we've have we seen any bind keys. Let's have a little search in the project to see 
Uh, whether they are front key. Okay, what is what class is this in? Debug a local controller. Class default object of settings, and we get category slot zero when it's pressed. Now they just make a bunch of these different functions. Wah. Okay, but ultimately, we're still in a situation though. We're stuck doing this, where we're binding. And the function here, we can't control. This delegate here, you can see, is an F input binding and it has no arguments. And that's really what we're lacking at the moment, right? I think. Yeah. Input code. Actually, hang on. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. It's an input code. Uh, a key coming in, and whether or not you're pressing shift and all that. Okay, sweet. That's not too bad. Delegate function, they all. What's the difference between these? Oh, this just calls that one with a bunch of falses. Ah, uh, you can just do it with a key rather than a chord. Okay. So it goes ahead and it makes a chord for you and passes none for all of the, the modifier keys that you press in. Okay. Um, so we can bind to key. That's getting us slightly more uh, promising. And you do it with an F key. So we can do that. But we're still in a position where we can't... All we can do is give it a direct function. But I don't want it. We don't have a function. We could, could we do a, I, just, I want to see if there's a bind key or a bind action with a, like a lambda. I'm not the first person to think of this. Uh, not using bind action per se, but if you look how bind action is implemented, you can use the same tools to do what you're asking. So you can, you can make an input action and then you can get the delegate and bind it yourself and then you add it. <gasps> okay, this is interesting to see. So uh, the reason with what they're saying is we just make a, what is this, F input action binding. Oh, there, there. This is on an, a, a particular action delegate, right? It'd be the same sort of thing, though. I'd imagine. So, if we just have a look at bind action instead, yeah, input action binding. Can you see here? And then we bind to it using this. Not being in good enough condition. Uh, hey, Jamsa, how Brano gets into his, his, his zone. He, he, he's not one like me who stresses about being ready for it. He's just, he's, he's ready. Am I trying to make it an option? No, I'm not trying to make an option. So, so I'm looking at trying to do uh, like a... Uh, a generic kind of system for tracking keyboard input for the purpose of like mini games where it, it might pop up and say type this word or it might be like one of those typing games where you have to type words to kill things or you might have to write a whole sentence or maybe you've got to tap p 10 times and then your character will p for example uh so i'm trying to make a little system that will handle that uh and i'm, I'm just trying to essentially the, the what i'm trying to figure out in my head at the moment is 
we need to bind. We, we want to use, or I want to use the input system. Uh, using input components, because that's what we've been studying this last month. Well, I say month, I mean the last three three Sundays. We've been looking at the input system. Uh, and we've we've done a, a bunch of notes on how it works in here. We're not going to actually need to know too, you, too much of those details about it. Uh, we're not going to have to know too much of the details for what we're trying to achieve. I'm trying to say, sorry. Anyway, but what I'm trying to figure out at the moment is we're basically passing in an array of keys that we care about. And we want to bind to when those keys are pressed. But we want to just call a generic function. Um, uh, and at the moment, we can't really, we don't want to make a function for every button that you could press, right? So I was trying to see, can we set up a lambda for it? So based on the input, we can call the same function, but pass a parameter into it. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. So that's what I'm thinking. Pray no, that tank emote is gorgeous. There, so there isn't any key option, but that, that, I don't think that goes through the input component. Uh, we, I should double check it, right? This is a hack. Well, we were just looking at code like this a second ago, right? Uh, okay, so we passed the key and I don't know what this would be in particular. Okay, let's have a look. So we set a key to be any key. Ah, so if it's any key, it counts as an input. So we can probably do that. This is interesting. So when we have any key press, then what we want to get is our key coming in, right? But how do we know what key is pressed? This is any key though. <laughs> I think the difference is I want to know what the any key is, and I don't know if this has that. As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't. Because we're basically binding any key, and then we're... Yeah, I don't think that is... This is quite what we want. This is just all key pr presses. Yeah, it's not quite what we want. There's nothing wrong with the work that they put there. Don't, this isn't what we want either. Oh, this is going to be too generic, I think, here. Yeah. Although this guy does a lot of good stuff in fairness to him, feel free to check him out. All right, stuff here. We're going to go with what we started to learn here, right? So essentially, what we'd want to do then... So if we got an input component, we would go for... Um, each F key will get a ref, I guess. Um, key in, or desired input, let's call it in desired inputs. We would want to go ahead and make a, a binding. Ah, oh, but then we'd also need to check we haven't bound to it already. I don't know if the input component does that, but uh, I guess we would make an array at this point uh, of F keys. We've already got one, but would <laughs> Q 
Key so far. I mean, this could be useful for other reasons, though. We could be counting how many times they need to be pressed. So maybe we could do a map. Uh, this could be because there's only going to be one per one, right? And then we could have the data of that key pair value be the how many times we want it to be pressed. For now, let's start as an array and we'll, we'll take it from there. So... Well, it's, it's, yes, I guess typing a dead is an example of it. it. It's less that I definitely want to make a game like that. It's more if I'm interested in making a system like that, because I think it'd be really fun for doing little game jam games to have learned a healthy way to do that. So I can spend more time making something fun rather than trying to learn the Unreal Input system in the middle of a game jam, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so if uh, bound keys contains... Uh, decide input. Uh, we can just, if it doesn't. Oh my words, it's to see on dragons. How lovely to see you. Dude, thank you for your messages. I'm sorry I haven't got back to you. I, I've been rather manic this weekend. Very much appreciate it. I will try and get back to you soon. But um, yeah, I appreciate what you were sending in DMs the other day. I did reply a little, but I didn't reply fully. How are you, man? How's your Sunday going? Still subscribed as well, like a boss. Even though you find it hard to make it to stream to these days. Thank you very much for your support, man. Uh, okay, so if it's not already bound, then we will add it at this point, I guess, right? We'll add that, right? I will make a copy. Is this something that makes it more uh, difficult in terms of logic in the CPP? Um, I, I know in blueprints you have a lot of kind of helper functions, basically, where you're able to just go on event this input pressed and handle it from that. Uh, the, the trouble is, I'm thinking I want to be able to create and handle stuff code-wise without jumping from Blueprint back to this. So um, we don't just have those on any key pressed events in the same means, to my understanding. But I, I might be a bit unsure about that. Well, the, the thing is, we need to do a little bit more than adding them to an, an array as well here. We want to do bindings to the input components as well. But, um, although this is just a means to kind of achieve that on any key pressed. I can't remember if the blueprint event has the, uh, the key that's been pressed on any key pressed or not. But for me, it's quite important that we make sure we're using the input components so we can take advantage of the, the, the stack and the blocking uh, qualities of it. Uh, okay, let's let's add this for now. Uh, where are we at? So, we, okay, we add that to there. Then we want to do a bind key. Well, actually, no, no, no. We are going to actually, the bind key function, we jump to this. We want to make what this does. So let's just jump, borrow this a sec. So we're going to make one of these a chord. Let's borrow the input chord. Oh, we've got a few things coming in here. Okay. All right, hold on, hold on, actually. Wasn't there, isn't there two? You can't you just take one that takes in a key instead? Yeah, and then it goes ahead and makes one of these. So we can just do one this way. So we will go and just pass it a key rather than a chord. Although, no, we, we actually have to, we're going to have to just do it this way. I'm going to make one of these to begin with. Uh, where are we? Uh, 
where are we on the line key here we basically call that with the key event but we don't have the event this time right so we're not going to quite do it this way the key binding is, is stored in KB at this point. Okay, so have I done the same here? No, I haven't. Sorry, I'm totally confusing myself jumping between these two classes. Input key binding. Ah, uh, yeah, well, I've done an input cord, haven't I? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, we're, we're getting there. Sometimes all the F names look the bloody same to me. Uh, we, I mean, we can give this... Uh, we can do that and then we can pass that in just to clean it up a little bit if we want so let's make one of those where we pass in input key into that uh, oh no, no 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 this is wrong as well I'm totally confusing myself go back to let's go back to where we were How, the key event we don't have, right? That's the problem. Actually, no, the, the, we do. This is the pressed. Okay, I thought the event... That's fine, that's fine. I thought the event was something else then. My mistake. Okay, so this would be... Uh, are you pressed? It, one of those, isn't it? Like that. Okay, good. So that's the, that bit done. And then instead of binding to delegate, we're going down this route. Uh, where we want to do action delegate dot get Daniel, uh, delegate for mine manual set. <coughs> Excuse me. So we want to get the key binding. We want to get the action delegate of that. So I'm guessing this has an action delegate in here. Does it not? All right, so F input action binding. So we've done, we've gone ahead and we've done our F input key binding. And this is the thing that should have the delegate. There we go. Does it have the getters for us? Ah. Hold on. Does, what about this? And unbinds any bound dynamic delegates to it. This is within. Okay, I think this is. You can use this regardless of which one you're using. Okay, so we should be able to call this. This should be. Uh, key binding there, a key binding action delegate, get this, bind lambda. Right, and then at this point, this is where we want to actually call another function. So we would do um, input received, and then we'd want to pass in an F key. <coughs> I mean, it doesn't, we can do a copy of it, I don't care. Let's do this. And then uh, in this thing, let's change it to that. This, we're going to have to cancel that out because it's no longer going to be valid syntax. I want to finish this. I do need to wrap up stream. It's past my bedtime. But... Uh, I want to try and, this has already confused me enough, if coming back at a later time is not going to make it easier to understand. Okay, so we say what we want to be pressed. Uh, we say that we're binding it to when the this type of input event. And then here we're saying, so when that does happen, that key and this type of input event for it, we want to go ahead and bind this delegate. And we're making a lambda. And we need to pass in our key, desired input into this actually hold on isn't this an argument you put? Uh, 
Would it be like that instead? A bind lambda is if you... Why do I always get confused with lambdas? It doesn't matter how many bloody times I do them. Uh, hello there, Smoofer. How you doing? So what I was thinking would we would then call um, this function, which is on input received. And then we pass in the desired input here. Uh, I'm trying to work out a little a little system to allow inputs to be pressed and tracked uh, in order for like a, a typing mini game. Uh, I don't have like a game in mind. It's more of just trying to build it up for when I want to use it in future. And to learn about the input system while doing it. So the bind lambda here would be if this delegate was expecting a parameter, it would be the parameter that's coming in from it. That's what would go in those brackets, right? So this delegate doesn't come with a, a, with a parameter, so we can leave that empty. I'm just trying to convince myself that I know what's going on here. So do forgive the confusion. Uh-oh. I do that up just a little bit. Yeah, well, thank you, good sir. Uh, what have you been doing with your Sundays? Okay, so if we were to bind that using that lambda, and then we add the action binding. So they've done add action binding. Okay, hold on. Let's go into the... Oh, hold on. Go into the input component, add action binding they've got, right? Surely there's going to be an add key binding. Are you serious? There's not. Why would they do it like that? Why could you do an add action binding but not a add key binding? Why would they do this to me? Ah, oh, please. That's some Diablo 3. I haven't played Diablo 3 for a long time, Sion. I'm glad you're getting some enjoyment out of it, dude. Uh, you want to know if it's pressed in a, a specific frame? No, I, not as such. I just want... I want to utilize the existing input system. And so I don't want to be, like, querying, is this key being pressed manually? Because I want to take advantage of the input stack that is already built into the input system where you are able to block certain inputs from being pressed and only track inputs based on the stack of input components that you've got so the idea say you had like six words that you needed to type in that when you're typing the first one only inputs for that would be processed rather than anything behind of it uh no ax axis bindings is going to be uh, like a control stick is or like up down left right that's axis actions are names for actions that you bind in the options uh, I'm looking for it what is in it it's zero or one do you mean not but it I would still I don't know how uh, an Axis binding is gonna make a difference here, right? Or oh, right. Okay, I didn't actually know you could do it by key like this. So you can do it name, or you can do it by axis. But I guess you'd be reading that on tick, right? So on tick, you would read the current ones, or is there binds by, uh... So 
See, what I was trying to do... <sighs> so, you can see here, we do a thing called... Uh, So it may never, it doesn't fire until the key is pressed, but ascent, effectively that on axis is somewhere there's a tick that is checking is the condition for this event to be fired done. And if so, it will fire it, right? Um, but what, what's bothering me, I, I want to try and explore this solution first, just because I, I've come into it quite a bit. If you're using action bindings, which is a name rather than a key itself, so you might call it jump instead of space, you can go ahead and manually bind a delegate to that instead of uh, uh, using a lambda rather than, and that that will allow you to do more specific. It changes the flexibility of what functions I can call when it presses it, because otherwise you're stuck to just a named function. So I wanted to do a lambda, and it looks like you can do it, but you can do it with actions, but you can't do it with keys, which I don't understand. Why not? I mean. Because they, uh, key, this is the what you normally use: bind action or bind key. I understand the the use. I understand the use of actions. Don't get me wrong, but they already have a bind key function. You can bind to a key, or you can bind to an action. But what they don't have is a um, add action binding. They have here to manually you pass it one. Let me just show you: add action binding. You can manually add a binding to the actions rather than doing the normal syntax of like bind this named action to this type of input event and this is the function I want to call. Instead, you can make your own one and then you can pass it, that, that whole struct into it. But they don't have it for keys, unfortunately. Which for me personally, it doesn't make sense why they wouldn't have that. Because if we go into add action binding, you can see here we have action bindings as an array. Is there a key bindings array in here? Or hmm, maybe that's why. Maybe it look. Oh, no, no, no. There is key bindings here, right? Oh, no, no, no. Key bindings is a different thing, I believe. These are event called, no, no, it's, it's not actually, it's a delegate. So it does have an array of these. So maybe we can just manually do it because this is private. What does it actually do with the, in here? Oh, crikey. <laughs> it is quite a lot of complex stuff here. Uh... I don't like the idea of we're not going to have access to this. I'm not going to do engine changes here as well. How they and, uh, handle text boxes. Uh, yeah, that would be a good idea. Let me put that down as a note for next time. Uh, I was meant to finish stream quarter of an hour ago. So uh, let me just whack this down here. Uh, the thing is, it might be done via slate, which the the input goes a different route for slate, which is a bit annoying. Um, 
So it's likely going to be that for, for text boxes. It's going to be via a slate. Uh, and the, the difference is as well, they probably just want to get the value associated with that key and put it in, whereas I want to do some logic based on that. But still, it's not, it's not a bad suggestion still. Um, making a text based adventure in right, right, and that might handle some uh, input processing stuff. You think? Uh, all right, uh, I'll I'll put that in as a reference for next time or between now and then anyway that I can have a peep at. Thank you dude for suggestions I'm trying to help with this. Uh, I just want to write a summary so I can remember where I was last uh, at the end of the stream then so I was planning to do to bind a delegate to a key event using see on dragons 39 months now good set you're a lovely person. What is that? What the heck is an effector? That one is new to me. Sorry, Sion, I missed that message earlier, dude. Uh, so in Unreal, pretty much every data type slash class slash object will have a prefix. So if they derive from actor, they will be an A something. If they derive from a U class, they will be a U something. And then anything else has an F at the start of it. So your structs will always start with an F. So a vector is essentially a, a struct of uh, like X, Y, Z, right? So that's why it's called a, an effector. There you go. This is your, your fun lesson for the day. I know that was ex exhilarating. It used to be, they used to use it for float and then F for float. It made sense for that. And then they just used it for everything, which kind of kills its meaning a bit. But um, Using bind. Uh, using a lambda. Uh, let's get that page. Boom. However, uh, it seems uh, we are only able to bind actions that way. And Jitspo, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome along to Jitspo and anyone else who's coming along on the raid. We have Artval1. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, I do regret to inform you. I'm going to be uh, wrapping up streaming in a sec. I'm already quarter an hour overdue and it's 10 to 11 here. And I need to get to bed because I'm up at half six in the morning. But it doesn't mean that I don't appreciate your raid. And if you have any suggestions on who you'd like the raid to go on to at the end of my stream, do feel free to say. And I will take it into consideration. But what were you up to on stream and how are you doing? So the, the reason we want a lambda, a lambda is because we want to call a function with a parameter that is uh, the key that was pressed. It definitely does feel like I'm fighting against the system. There, there may be other ways to achieve this. Don't get me wrong. But I'd also like to be able to find if I can solve this problem uh, how I want, because it'll give me the control that I want. You did a Dungeon and Dragon stream today. You fought an actual dragon for once. Well, as actual as a fancy. Awesome. Are you just a player or are you a, a, D a DM? Thank you, Spacey, as well, for the welcome pig horse. <laughs> You're a player, I see. And so you did, did the dragon kill Jitspo the Brave? I'd imagine not, or you'd be less excited about it. Yeah. 
so we, we might we need to have a look at this function next stream and see if we can manually do that. Excuse me. I guess the key. Now, if our party did get put to sleep, though, uh, oh, sorry, I missed the first bit. We knocked it out. It wasn't actually an enemy, more of a trial. Oh, you knocked it out. That's better than killing it, right? You just gave it a little bump on the noggin and it's out. It's out. Uh, Artfile, were, were you just uh, watching or were you, were you playing along as well? What have we chucked in here? Yeah, the any key thing does come with the key. Indeed it does. So this is going to be the release one, right? Yeah, um, the Pixel Theory, I do agree with you. Uh, but when you asked me earlier, I did say I wanted to stop it from being a mix between Blueprint and CPP. I shouldn't have to go this way. Uh, I, I feel like I want to improve my understanding enough to be able to do what this does, but without having to rely on a back and forth between CPP and Blueprint. But yes, this is this is essentially what I'm looking to achieve here, right? You're completely correct. And this would be a way for us to call back into CPP. I appreciate that. No, 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 I, I get you. I get that this is going to be a, an event that you could then implement. But I, we shouldn't have to go to Blueprint for it. I, I know I'm being stubborn here. But I, I, we'll, we'll try and have a look how that is implemented. Okay. You're saying to, you can call the any key function. Or you, or the delegate, you mean by that? As in you can bind to that delegate. So my concern with, with that would be if we are not able to, if that doesn't go via the input stack then. Because that will go around that input stack concept then. Because you're manually just going to be doing stuff based on the keys pressed, right? I think. So you were just spectating art file. Ah, okay. That, that sounds cool. That sounds cool. I, I've tried D&D &D a couple of times in the past. But yeah, I think uh, I don't have much of the... I, I don't make enough time for it uh, to get into it properly and to get a campaign that would last properly. Uh, but if that's the case, um, you don't need to know the key pressed. You can just read the input stack on tick. That is another suggestion, yeah, we could do. Because, yeah, you can query you like what keys are currently pressed, right? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, we did. It kind of it fell apart a bit, but I also feel like it. You need to be. I think it helps to know the people you're playing with well before playing, because it helps you get a, gra a kind of understanding of what the the personalities are like, and that you can play into each other's interests and uh, kind of personalities a little bit, I guess. So for me, it was kind of as much as I knew people by name. You don't really know. I didn't know all of the individuals very well, and I find that. Uh, a harder thing to make sure that we're all coming in it for the same sort of experience, you know? But uh, yeah, P uh, Pixel Theory, thank you for the um, the input today. You're helping me at least think of different options. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is 25 minutes past when I was meant to finish stream. So I'm going to have to wrap up. Um, Jispo says that he has some IRL play. Uh, IRL friends that they play online every week. Campaigns can take years. It's a big investment, yeah. I, I think uh, it, IRL friends are good for it just because you, you ha you've already established that kind of you're going to catch up anyway, right? It, so it makes it less of a commitment. It's just you you use your catch up. You D&D &D becomes your catch up in a way. But um, right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 